Dr. Sriram Chaulia, Professor and Executive Director of the Center for Global Governance and Policy at Jindal Global University. So we'll just start with this. After these uh, midterms, Republicans will uh, have a majority in Congress. Just exactly what will that mean for President Obama and his party? Well, it's a nightmare. It's a predicted nightmare. But nonetheless, they have to now reckon with it uh, now that the results are out. Uh, it's going to mean um, their power is extremely curtailed. So executive authority represented in the White House is now going to reckon with a very hostile uh, Congress. And uh, I think the prospect of bipartisan uh, coalitions to be able to overcome this are rather limited. So what we're going to see is more deadlock, more gridlock. And unfortunately for President Obama, I think his attempts to carve out a legacy in the form of legislation is going to face a severe shock. And uh, what he has left now is, you know, to try and eke out some successes, minor successes, through executive uh, action and authority, uh, which is limited in the U.S. constitutional system. So I think the American people, unfortunately, have given a very confused verdict. Uh, if they wanted clear government, they should have uh, not plunked. Uh, entirely for the Republicans in this fashion, but clearly they seem to be disillusioned with uh, both parties, and the result is you're going to have, uh, you know, probably more um, you know, lack of consensus, which is going to uh, drag down the whole system uh, for the next couple of years. I'm afraid that we are back to the banana republic status. America has been a laughing stock of the world in the last few years because of this divided government problem and severe ideological polarization, and we look to be heading back in the same direction again. Okay, let's just have a look at what possible consequences that could be. Let's, let's start abroad. Do you think there'll be any changes to America's foreign policy? I think Obama is going to try to push uh, for the um, peace deal uh, with Iran over the nuclear uh, issue and uh, to try and also create uh, some kind of basis for a Palestinian state. But I think both these issues are now going to be stonewalled because very hawkish, ultra-right-wing conservatives are now ruling both the House and the Senate. Earlier, he just had to handle John Boehner in the House, and now he's got Mitch McConnell in the Senate to handle. So I think uh, it's going to be a lot of roadblocks. I am afraid that Obama's stature in the world is also going to decline as a result of this, because people are not going to take anything he says uh, or commit seriously, because back home he can't get the numbers uh, to stand behind him. So beat the nuclear deal, beat um, uh, two-state solution for Israel and Palestine, beat uh, even um, accommodating Russia over the Ukraine and uh, over NATO's encroachment. I think we're going to see a lot of hardline positions coming from Congress, and at every state they're going to be saying, Obama, you're not man enough, Obama, you need to toughen up, and Obama, we're not going to give you the money if you uh, don't listen to us. So I think he's unfortunately going to be tied down, uh, and it's going to uh, uh, have a negative impact on U.S. foreign policy in terms of its efficacy and in terms of its credibility. Okay, what about domestic policies? Will things be any easier there? Energy, um, immigration, climate change, I think these are the critical areas where Obama uh, wants to leave a mark for himself, but I think they will not allow him now. Uh, and now that both the houses are stacked against him, the possibilities are very slim for him to achieve anything significant. But um, what you can see, and um, Mitch McConnell has said just after the election results, that he's going to look at areas where they can cooperate with the White House, but I think it's a very narrow band. So, on the whole, the system has been stymied in the past, and it looks like it's going to get worse in the next couple of years. So I think, you know, an America that's not functional and which has a governance deficit, a clear governance deficit and problem, is not going to be convincing either to the domestic public or to, to the world. You already mentioned, um, because of this ideological difference between the, the, the Democrats and uh, Republicans in, in Congress in the past, that it wasn't very effective, that was the accusation. Uh, certainly it lost general uh, approval over the years. Do you think that's going to change? Will it improve at all now? The only redeeming hope would be that uh, both the parties will eye the 2016 presidential election and try to reach consensus, at least on some issues. I think the only hope for Obama is that the Republicans will see sense uh, and not block everything that he proposes, because uh, 2016 could be very different. In fact, 2016, uh, when, again, there's going to be a, a midterm election for Congress, as well as a presidential election, uh, the Republicans may face the fury of the voters for being uh, perceived as obstructionists. But nonetheless, um, and, and the other saving grace, I think, is that the Tea Party and the very hardline uh, you know, elements in the Republican Party have been somewhat sidelined. 
uh, by the mainstream Republican Party. So these are the silver linings, but I'm afraid that overall uh, it's not a great story to talk about uh, from America's governance or foreign policy point of view. They're both going the southward. If Obama does want to achieve things, as you've suggested, he, he would like to do, and if he wants to put forward new political initiatives, how does he go about that in a tactful and, and a potentially productive way? He has been trying to mend his aloof uh, stance over the last uh, year or so and trying to reach out uh, across the aisles to the Republican Party. But I think he's just not, and he and his advisors have always believed that uh, a degree of polarization is good for him politically because it shows him in better light for the voters. Uh, but now that he is not up for re-election, he's going to be thinking about potentially his successor could be uh, Hillary Clinton or somebody else from the uh, Democratic Party. He has to smooth the way for them, so he will also carry a responsibility to pass on um, the legacy and to ensure that uh, the Democrats retain the White House, which which uh, is a challenge without Obama. So I think um, the 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 only means are to you know to build these cross um, uh, party coalitions on issues and to come together. They have a few common. For example, on trade policy, uh, it's in fact the Democratic Party that's been obstructing Obama more than the Republicans. So there clearly the Republicans want a freer trade agenda and more authority for the president to negotiate free trade agreements. And I think there Obama will find some support on um, uh, patents, on corporate taxation and so on. Again, they may find some ground. But at the end of the day, the economy is not doing well. What the voters are saying is neither of the parties is doing well. So what is the point of this consensus? People will be saying, Listen, even if you work together, at the end of the day, the misery from the economic crisis is not over, healthcare is not working, and overall, you know, it's a huge chaotic mess. And how did we end up here? Why did the Democrats lose those, those states? Some people have said that it's because the traditional Democrat backers basically just didn't turn up. Do you, do you agree with that? And if so, why? Well, there were some uh, states where they were predicted to do well, like North Carolina, where they lost. But overall, if you look at the um, states that went up for this midterm election, most of them in the South and the West were Republican bastions anyway. So uh, in that sense, uh, one cannot fault the Democratic voters for not turning up. It's just that these states, um, you know, where there is a tendency to view things with a more racist and a more conservative viewpoint, had never accepted Obama in the first place. So it's just the luck of draw, you know, the timing, uh, 2008, uh, six years ago, these seats had been won by the Democrats uh, in, a, in a surprise wave, and this time, you know, predictably they lost because these were have, have been red states, uh, so to say, and they've gone back to, to, to Republican control. Dr. Charlie, a pleasure to speak to you. Thanks so much for coming on RT.